Howdy, howdy, gang. Cheap Bastard coming at you live from Montreal, QC. Today we're going to get a new look at some old kit. Uh, specifically, this time around, it's going to be this uh, cook kit that I've had for a while. This was a gift. I didn't buy it, I'm happy to say. Um, it is the GSI Soloist Cook Kit. Very nice little kit. Uh, a little uh, background on this. It was designed, I believe, primarily to be used with uh, those little gas cylinders and uh, your pocket rocket type stove setup, which is not really my cup of tea, not my thing. I never, um, <clears throat> never bought any of that stuff. I didn't want to have to handle the canisters and the disposal of the canisters, and it just didn't uh, fit in my philosophy, as it were. At any rate, quick introduction. Uh, some of you have seen this pot, some of you have not. So what we got is, it's an aluminum pot. It's, I like the weight, it's very lightweight. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what the grams or ounces are. You can look that up, that's what the internet is for. <clears throat> uh, at any rate, it has a folding handle, which I dearly love, insulated, silicone insulated, so you don't burn your digits on that stainless steel handle. It has uh, something that I really do not like, and that is this plastic lid. However, one must adapt and learn how to cope. So I've kept it, <clears throat> despite many protests and conversations with the folks at GSI. Uh, inside the pot comes with a um, bowl slash cup. Uh, it's very nice. It's insulated. It has a little removable neoprene sleeve, uh, which is good because uh, you can hold on to it if it has hot coffee or whatever in it. You can also put this lid on. <clears throat> it snaps into place and you can drink. It's like a little sippy cup. So that keeps the bugs and stuff out of whatever it is you're drinking. Yes, and so all of that packs nicely into this, um, what do you call this, stuff sack. Um, it is a heavy gauge uh, nylon and it's coated with, uh, I guess, uh, PVC, poly, I don't know what kind of coating it is. But they say now, they being the folks at GSI, that you can use this as a wash basin. Mm, perhaps. I've never used it as a wash basin. I've only used it to throw things in, you know, like spoons or lids or uh, whatever, you know, I'm making. So I haven't found this to be a really useful item, but that's just me. Others may love it. So I've kind of just cast this aside. I leave it in the closet. I don't use it for anything. There was also a folding, not a folding spoon, but a collapsing spoon. What do they call it? A foon. It's kind of like that spork fork uh, spoon thingy. It was plastic. It was cheap. It was a piece of shit. Okay, I, I broke many of them. I would call uh, GSI. They would send me new ones, but it's just not worth it. So I got rid of it. I got a stainless steel spoon. You can use a plastic spoon. You can use plastic forks. Actually, I recommend plastic because this is a non-stick coating, and if you scratch it, well, what happens? Shit's gonna stick. Anyway, that is the foundation. And uh, it has evolved, and I encourage everyone to take their store-bought kit and adapt it to their own needs using whatever materials are at hand. And in just a moment, after I visit the lavatory, I shall come back and show you some of those things. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. Right, then, all is well. So, philosophy of use. Uh, who is it that uses that term, nut and fancy, the nut and fancy project? And that's a great point, philosophy of use. So, I determined that I needed to use either fire, because you know, wood's cheap, free, it's always there if you're in the woods. However, some places you can't make a fire, so what's the next best choice? Well, I didn't want to carry the cylinders, so I needed... 
I needed a, uh, a an alternate stove type. And like so many of us, I opted for one of these uh, soda can alcohol stoves. This one's a little different, actually. Uh, I just made this one, and I'm going to show you all how to make one yourselves, because it's totally awesome, cool. It's probably the easiest one. Hey! I'm not talking to you, cat. It's probably the easiest one to make I've seen so far, and it works. It's a champ. Love it. So you got your alcohol stove. Uh, I also added a... Um, this is a little Nalgene uh, one-ounce container. It has a lid. I don't really need the lid. <clears throat> However, when you're using different fuel types, you don't want to get it mixed into, say, whatever's in your pot when you pack it away. So I keep the lid, and I always have a charge of fuel on hand, and that fits right in there like that. So, you got to have a windscreen if you're cooking with an alcohol stove. Oh, let's go, let's back up just a moment here. Now, the other reason I like this is it's a stove and pot stand all in one. Right, so that just sits right on top there. Now the pot's got a heavy handle, so it's going to want to fall off here. But when you put water and food and so forth in it, it's very stable. So I needed a, uh, a windscreen, and I have had this piece of aluminum flashing. It has been used for numerous projects, so I thought, well, we'll just adapt it to this one. So I cut it, uh, and it fits and works great. Uh, it works kind of almost like the caldera cone because you can shape it to, you know, focus your heat on the pot a little more depending on your needs, etc., etc. Anyway, so that's that. But it did not fit in this silly bag very well. It was kind of awkward and cumbersome. So, <clears throat> as many of you may have experienced already, when you use one of these alcohol stoves, you don't have a lot of fuel to play with, so you want to maximize uh, that fuel. And inevitably, you will come to uh, the pot cozy. Let's move this out of the way for a moment. The pot cozy. So you boil it, whatever it is, your freeze-dried meal, and then you stick it in the pot cozy just like that. You then would put your lid on top. Of course, now this probably already would have been on top while I was using an alcohol stove to fully maximize the potential of my fuel source there. Then this goes on top. And let's suppose you're making beans and rice or whatever. This is going to continue to cook uh, for up to 20 minutes. It's great. Plus, you can pick it up without burning your digits. I hate burning my digits. Anyway, so that's what we got so far. <clears throat> now, that's alcohol. Me, I am a pyromaniac fire bug. So, I naturally want to use this works over a fire source versus an alcohol burner. So, let's see what problems one would face with that scenario and how we overcome those problems. Uno momento, por favor. Oh, apologies for that rude interruption. My little kitty cat was feeling a tad bit hypoglycemic. He needed nourishment immediately. Anyway, so I digress. Over there, I've built a fire and I'm going to make some uh, yummy uh, ramen noodles with tuna because it's my favorite. Um, so, I'm going to unpack this, right, there we go, there's our pot again. Now, the trouble is, if you use this pot over a fire with this plastic lid, see, I didn't say piece of shit, which was my initial instinct, but when you use this, um, <laughs> fire is unpredictable. And I have melted the edge of this numerous times to the point where sometimes it just flops into the pot like that. So I, I was struggling to find a way around this and I used uh, lids of various types, uh, materials. <laughs> and then finally, joy of joys, in my 
kitchen cabinet at home, I found the roll of tin foil again. Oh, I rediscovered a lost friend. And, you know, it works fabulous. It just sits right on there. Because it's so long, you can, you know, you can remove it and put it back on. It's, it's just, it's a breeze. What, you know, you don't need anything fancy schmancy. So that gets on the fire. It's done. Uh, it's cooking. Uh, I can put it into the cozy. However, here's a problem that arises. Many of you know that when you cook on a fire, an open fire, the pot gets all kinds of crap stuck to it and it's really sticky and it pisses me off. It's messy. And if I put that in this pot cozy, the first thing that happens is it sticks to the reflectix on the inside and becomes nearly, or can become nearly impossible to remove without destroying the cozy. Well, here's a solution for you. If you've, if you've had that problem, this is what you do. You take your windscreen, which is cut just the exact same size dimensions as the cozy. Now, the pot may stick to the windscreen. I don't care if it sticks to the windscreen. It's easy to pry off and this aluminum flashing is really durable and it, it won't be a problem and has not been a problem, I'm happy to say. However, we still have the issue of the bottom, which is where the real sticky stuff is. Well, <laughs> Here we go. Aluminum foil to the rescue. This is a piece of foil that I use as a vapor barrier for my alcohol stove. Well, if I just drop that in the bottom there, like a zo, the pot goes in. Now, it may happen that the foil sticks to the bottom of my pot, but it's a simple matter just to peel it off. This is sacrificial aluminum. Eh? Foil. Aluminum foil. Yeah, yeah. So, no big deal. Doesn't weigh a thing. And it's cheap, cheap, cheap. You have plenty at home. No reason not to use it. Now, just like the alcohol stove, let's say I can only make a small fire. So I've got to maximize that fire. Again, boil it. Put your lid on. The regular lid after you're done with the foil lid. Why not? And then just cover it up. Bob's your uncle. Everything's groovy, right? Okay, so let's see. I'm a big fan of nesting. I like things that nest together nicely. So that was my other, my other big uh, obsessive compulsive uh, issue. So Let's look at how all this fits together here uh, in just a moment. Right, so we're playing just pretend, we're playing just pretend, and uh, we are finished uh, with all of our stuff. And usually when I am out camping, I, I have things just scattered everywhere. So it would look, you know, kind of like uh, just a huge mess. Well, no big deal. Let's say that we've cleaned everything up. We're putting it all back together. Our windscreen's gonna slide in there. My uh, foil lid is gonna go in the bottom. Uh, somewhere is a, uh, oh yeah. See, I've already left the, uh, the other piece in there. So I got two pieces of foil just sitting in the bottom there. The pot is gonna go in. All right, I'm gonna take this lid off. Oh. I have a, a cup, right? This is a beautiful cup. Did I talk about this cup? I don't think I did. This is another GSI cup, and I'm ashamed to say I spent far too much money on it. It's $10, but the sleeve is beautiful, and it holds heat like crazy. But even better is the lid. The lid has a rubber gasket that goes all the way around it, so it doesn't leak. It opens up here on the top, the top even has a gasket, so it doesn't leak. Now, I'm prone to tip things over and spill. And recently, we were in a tent, and my little boy, you know, they spill things, kids. That's, that's part of their uh, job description is to spill things. So this was his cup. And I mean, hot chocolate tips over, upside down, not a drop. 
So that goes in the bowl. Oops, excuse me. First, we got the stove that goes in the cup. We have the fuel container, oops, that goes in the stove. Got our little scrub pad that fits in there. The lid goes on, snaps down tight, goes in there like that. That goes in there like that. The lid goes on top, handle folds down, snaps in place. Cozy goes on top. And that is that. One could, if one chose, put a rubber band around this. Uh, I have not done that yet, but maybe I will when I take this uh, on my bicycle for a road trip. I don't know what this weighs. It's not the lightest. It's not the smallest. But for me, it is a champ, and I love it. Uh, I wouldn't say do the same thing that I'm doing. Everybody obviously has different needs. Adapt what you can use to your needs. That's the whole point of this here show, folks. So we'll catch you on the flip flop. Ciao. Happy trails.